My current end portal looks like this, and it's been like that for almost a thousand days in this hardcore world. It's about time we give it an upgrade. So today, I'm going to be doing an insane end portal transformation. This is going to be my biggest project yet, and we'll need to collect almost 100,000 blocks to complete it, with the first being 300 stacks of black concrete. Wait a second, 300 stacks? How could I possibly need this much concrete? Well, let me explain. The plan for the build is something like this. I'm going to build a giant oversized end portal above ground first, dig a massive hole in the center, and make it look like the portal portal is seeing into the end. But since the end is mostly black void, the entire inside of the portal needs to be covered in black concrete. Then once I have that done, I'll recreate the main end island in the center to complete the transformation. But first, I need to get a ton of materials to build it. I already have tons of gravel from my bartering farm, and infinite black dye from my wither rose farm. So the only thing we're missing to craft a bunch of concrete is sand. About six shulker boxes worth. Wait a second, I don't have any more shulker boxes. That's gonna be a problem. So let's loot as many end cities as I possibly can in one hour. I've I've already looted all the end cities next to these two gateways, so I'm gonna respawn the dragon real quick and kill it with beds the speedrunner way. But now I have a new end gateway that I can fly through, and one hour starts now. All right, we have our first end city, and it's time to get some shulker shells. But after 11 minutes, that's end city number one all done. It's time to move on. There's so many shulkers here. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're halfway there, and I just finished with end city number five, and I have 60 shulker shells. This is going pretty well. I have 10 minutes left, and I'm so close to getting two stacks of shulker shells. These guys are being cringe and teleporting. I just need one more, and there's two end cities over here. Come on, drop a shell, please. And there we go. I made it to two stacks of shells. Okay, 30 seconds left. It's craziness. There's so many shulkers. And we're done. That went really quick, actually. One hour is not as long as it seems when you're looting a bunch of end cities. But in total, I managed to get two stacks and six shulker shells. Just like how my goal was two stacks of shulker shells, my goal for this year is to reach 500,000 subscribers. So if you're enjoying this video so far, subscribe to help me reach it. I'm over 17,000 blocks away from home, so I have to find an end gateway to get back. Oh my gosh, there's one right there. It's amazing. One hour, 12 end cities, and over two stacks of shulker shells, and we're finally back home. But now that I'm back, I can craft up some chests and turn these into some shulker boxes. Oh my gosh, I have so many, but we're only gonna need six to gather up all the sand. Now let's head over to the desert, let my allays off their leads, and start collecting six shulker boxes of sand. And we're done. That's all the sand that I'll need to craft up all of the black concrete. And while I was here, I also got a shulker box of sandstone, since we're gonna need that later. But now that I'm done, I can grab all these shulker boxes drop them off at home, and head over to the end to get 150 stacks of black dye. I hope my wither rose farm is fast enough. And here we go. This is my first proper test of this farm since I built it. Okay, it's been about an hour. Let's see how much I've gotten. I really hope it's enough. Oh my gosh. Almost four entire double chests of wither roses. That's crazy. All right, I'm back with some shulker boxes. Let's get these all loaded up. And there we go. That's everything. First, we have to turn all of this into black dye, and then grab even more shulker boxes to grab up six shulker boxes of gravel from my bartering farm. And now with these 18 shulker boxes, I have all the materials to craft up a ton of black concrete. 300 stacks in total. And then I'm gonna have to convert all this. Oh my gosh. I'm not really looking forward to that. All right, that's all the concrete crafted up, but I think I don't know how to do math because I still have four shulker boxes of black dye left over. That was a small miscalculation, but we'll definitely need more in the future, so it's always good to have extra. But now we have to convert all this concrete powder into concrete. And I definitely have to build a farm for this because doing this by hand is gonna take way too long. Luckily, this farm is super easy to build and this is all I'm gonna need. I think I'll build it right over here. And there we go. That's the farm all done. Let's test it out. Okay, it works. This might take a while. It took me longer to turn all this powder into concrete than it did for me to gather all the materials to craft it up. But it's finally done, and these are all the shulker boxes. And while I was doing that, I also laid out a ton of copper to oxidize, since I'll also be needing three stacks of oxidized copper. And also, as I was waiting for the copper to oxidize, I went over to my sheep and got all the wool that I'll need. But it's on to the next item, and that's 91 stacks of end stone. That's gonna be so painful to gather. Luckily, I have an extra nether star that I can turn into a beacon, grab some resource blocks, and now I can head over to the end to get all this end stone. Hopefully, this is the last time I'll be using this ugly end portal, because very soon we're transforming it into something amazing. All right, now to just fly to an outer end island, clear out an area down here from my beacon, and start setting it up. And now that I have that done, I can put haste 2 on it, and there we go. I didn't even check this before, but can you instamine end stone with haste 2, please? Oh my gosh, you can't? This is gonna go so slow. Okay, well, that beacon was kind of for nothing. But now it's time to gather up 91 stacks of endstone. This is definitely going to take a long time. And there we go. That's what 91 stacks of endstone looks like all mined up. That took so long, but I have it all done. So it's on to the next item, which is going to be a shulker box of birch and oak logs. Normally, that would be pretty hard to get, but I'm going to build a tree farm instead, which should make things go a lot faster. To build this tree farm, I'm going to need some building blocks, a bunch of pistons, and everything else. Let's go build this thing. It's going to go right over here in my industrial district. First, we're going to start with the collection system. There we go. 
that's all done. And now I'm up here building the TNT duper and it's going to drop TNT right onto this piece of obsidian. And then as the logs come out this way, they'll get blown up and then put into the collection system. And now the last step is to place the TNT and it's all done. I'm kind of scared. I hope this thing works, but I think everything should be good. So I'm going to quickly fly over to my melon and pumpkin farm, grab all of this stuff and turning all of this into bone meal since we're going to need a ton of this for the farm. And then I can head over to the tree farm and finally try it out. Let's see. Okay. The TNT duper works. Let's see if this works now. Okay. It's working. Oh my gosh. It's going through so much bone meal and not even one minute later, I'm already out of bone meal. Let's see how much we got though. Okay. Two and a half stacks. That's actually not too bad, but I'm going to have to come back to my melon and pumpkin farm and grab even more stuff and then pop this all in to get converted into bone meal. After running out of bone meal so many times, I finally have all the logs that I need. And I already went ahead and turned them all into strip logs. But now up next is 20 stacks of obsidian, which is going to be super easy thanks to my bartering farm. Wait a second. I'm short by just one stack. Let's fly up to my gold farm, grab all this gold, turn it all into gold ingots and put it all into my bartering farm. And after letting this farm run for a little bit longer, I finally have all the obsidian that I need. Now up next is a pretty weird item, but it's super important to making this build look good. And that's 20 stacks of skulk. Luckily, I have a pretty OP silk touch hoe, but it's kind of making me cringe that it's diamond. So I'm going to head back to the nether, find some ancient debris. This took me an entire shulker box of beds, by the way, and add netherite to my hoe. That's more like it. And now all I have to do is find an ancient city. And there's actually one right underneath my base over here, but there isn't that much skulk left over because I already mined a lot of this for XP, but there's still some patches that I can mine up. Where is all of it? Look at all this. <laughs> I completely drained this ancient city of skulk. And there we go. All the skulk that I need to complete this build. Now up next is 10 stacks of warped planks, which hopefully shouldn't be too hard to get. I mean, my entire nether hub is built out of them. So I just have to find a warp forest and then get to collecting all of this up. And there we go. That's more than enough. Now there's just a few random items left over, like 10 stacks of black wool and some chorus flowers. And that's it. That's everything that I need to build this insane end portal transformation. Getting all those items took so long, but it's going to be worth it when it's all done. Now, the first step to transforming this end portal is to dig a giant hole. Doing this by hand or placing TNT manually would take way too long. So I'm going to use some TNT flying machines instead. These are pretty easy to build with the main ingredient being slime blocks. Oh gosh, I am not going to have enough slime for this. So it's time to fly back to the swamp to get some more slime. Oh my gosh, it's chaos. I don't know what's wrong with this swamp, but there's always so many mobs in it. It's crazy. But at least we have some slime spawning. Oh my God. Okay, the first night in the swamp is over and I got two and a half stacks of slime balls and I'm gonna need about 10 stacks to make all these flying machines. So it looks like I'll have to stay here for about four days. Wait a second, there is something that I can do while I wait and it's to get another ingredient for the flying machines. I need four dead bubble coral fans. Kind of a specific item, but I know exactly where to find one and it's gonna be in a warm ocean just like this. All right, where are the bubble corals? Is this bubble coral? This is tube coral. Okay, what is this? This is tube coral fan. What is this? Fire coral fan. What about this? Horn coral fan. Oh my gosh, there's so many corals. What about the pink one? Brain coral. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait, I don't know what bubble coral looks like. Is it this purple one? There we go. Okay, it's the purple one. And I have to get four of these. And there we go. Four bubble coral fans. So this is the third night that I've been fighting all these slimes. And look at the amount of mobs over here. It's actually insane. But I'm getting a ton of slime, so it's super worth it. Oh my gosh, look at this. I can't believe this. Look at all those slimes. And look at all the slime I have in my inventory. Surprisingly, I haven't popped the totem yet. I've been pretty good at avoiding all these creepers sneaking up on me. And I also flattened the entire area out to make it a lot easier to fight the slimes. And there's one slime left right here and then we'll be all done. That was super successful. Now to just grab the rest of the items, which is going to be a bunch of redstone stuff. And there we go. That's everything that I'll need. But before we build it, there's something we have to do. I know there's always one more thing, but this is super important. Right here is where I'm going to dig this giant hole. But as you can see, there's a ton of water and TNT doesn't exactly work in water. So before we blow all this up, I'm going to have to drain part of this river. And to do that, I need sponges, which surprisingly I have zero in this world so far, but I think I know where I can find some. So I'm going to head back to the nether and over to my wither skeleton farm. Since right next to the overworld section, there's two ocean monuments. Okay, here we are. Let's go find these ocean monuments. Okay, there's one. Okay, quick break in before mining fatigue and we can kill the elder guardian. And there we go. I got one sponge, but let's see if I can find a sponge room. I haven't had any luck at any of the other monuments that I've raided, but maybe this one has a sponge room. Oh, look at this, a sponge room. It's amazing. This is the first sponge 
sponge room I've ever found. Oh my gosh. All right, so far we have half a stack. Oh, look at that. More sponges. There's so many sponge rooms. Every other ocean monument that I found has had zero sponge rooms, but this one has three. And now I have almost a stack and a half of sponges, but I'm definitely gonna need more. All right, we have our first sponge room. That brings me up to almost two stacks of sponges. Here's our second sponge room. Sponge room number three. This is sponge room number four. Sponge room number five. And my total is almost four stacks of sponge. That's honestly really good. And before I head back home, I need to make a quick pit stop at my bartering farm and get even more obsidian since I'll need to surround the river with a block that can't be exploded by TNT. So I'll use my gold farm to get some more gold and put it into the bartering farm to get some obsidian. And there we go. That's all the obsidian that I'll need. So let's grab some gravel and head over to the build site to outline where we're going to drain. And this is what the outline looks like. It's honestly not an insane amount of water, but it's still going to be quite a bit of work. First, I'll have to extend the obsidian going all the way down. And I was just short on obsidian, but that's fine because I can start draining this anyways. First, I'm going to grab my gravel and start making some sections. And now that I have everything all sectioned out, I can start placing all of my sponges. That's one section done, 10 more to go. And now that I have everything all cleared out, it's finally time to build the TNT flying machine. First, I'll grab out some materials, or I guess just all of them. <laughs> and now we can start building this thing. All right, after a little bit of time, here's the start station and the flying machine minus the TNT. But now we have to go over on this side and build the return station. And this is the return station. Honestly, pretty simple. So now let's come over here and prime the system. First, we're gonna have to place the rail like this, a mine cart on top. And then before we do anything, I need to place some TNT down below, something like that. And now I can power this piston. And then once I remove this, everything should be good. And now to do the same thing over here, the machine is finally ready to go. I'm kind of nervous. I hope it works. Now, all we have to do to start it is to remove this redstone block. Let's see. Please work. Okay, I think it's working. Look at it go. Oh my gosh, it's working. After spending a few hours AFK at my gold farm and bartering farm, I got even more obsidian to patch the holes in the sides of the dam. I also had to bust out my sponges again to get rid of some pesky water caves. But once I had that taken care of, the flying machine made it to the other side of the square. So I've done one pass with the flying machine and it's already done quite a bit of work, but it still isn't enough. I have to dig down all the way until I expose the end portal. And I think it should be right down here. Yep, here it is. Wait a second, while I'm here, I'm actually gonna place obsidian on top of this since I don't want TNT falling in here and killing me because that's how I died in my last hardcore world but I've learned from my mistakes. <laughs> now that I have the end portal protected I'm gonna build a little platform right here underneath the flying machine that way I can tear it down to relocate it. Oh gosh oh no <laughs> no okay well <laughs> I forgot that would happen. Okay the flying machine is rebuilt and this time it's going in this direction and I also positioned it much lower that way it can get down towards the portal. Okay it seems to be working pretty good so far. This hole is gonna be absolutely enormous once we're finished. Okay, I realize we have a bit of a problem. The flying machine is at the perfect height over on this side, but right here, the terrain is too high. So once the flying machine makes it over here, it's gonna blow itself up. So real quick, I'm gonna fly over here, stop the flying machine. Then I'm gonna fly back home real quick and grab some extra TNT. Let's also grab some sand and some gunpowder to craft up even more. Okay, we have a ton more TNT now. So I can fly back to the build site and blow all of this up. Okay, here we go. Is this gonna be a big explosion? Okay, yeah, that was a pretty big explosion. Let's see, will the flying machine clear now? Hmm, I think we have to blow it up one more time. I still have quite a bit of TNT. Okay, that's all the rest of my TNT. Oh gosh, I hope it doesn't hit me. There's a lot of TNT close to me, oh no. Okay, here it goes. Oh my gosh. Whoa, okay. I think that should be enough. Guys, I just realized I forgot something super important. Right down here inside the end portal, there's the wooden tools that I used to kill the ender dragon for the first time. And I really wanna save those. I don't want those to get blown up. So I'm gonna quickly fly home, grab an extra shulker box. Oh my gosh, it's my last one. I used so many shulker boxes this episode. It's a good thing we spent that hour looting all those end cities at the start. But now I can fly back here and save all of these precious items. Okay, it's all safe. We can now restart the chaos. All right, the flying machine's been rebuilt and it's even lower this time. And this will finally dig as deep as I want it to go. So this will be the last time we have to run this thing. Now, all we have to do is let this thing go all the way to the other side and we'll be good to go. All right, the flying machine has reached the end and we're finally done with this massive hole. But now that I have this all done, it's finally time to start building. Now we can grab all of these shulker boxes and now I'm gonna cover all four sides as well as the floor with black concrete. This is why we needed 300 stacks because this is gonna be a ton of black concrete. But in the end, it's gonna look super cool. All right, that's the floor all done. But now it's time for the wall. 
walls. And this is gonna take so long, but I can't wait to see how it turns out. The walls were actually easier than the floor and ended up going much faster than I expected. A creeper didn't like how it was turning out though and tried to put a stop to it. Thankfully, I had a totem on me and I was able to finish the rest of the walls. And just like that, the walls are done. Check this out, this looks insane. But now it's time to shift our focus to above the giant hole. This giant void right here is gonna be the center of this massive portal that I'm gonna build around it. And that's what all of these other blocks are for. First, I'm gonna outline everything in cyan wool. And this is gonna be the outline of the big end portal frame. I tried my best to match the color of the blocks I used to the ones in real life. And cyan wool was as close as I could get to this outline right here. But now I'm gonna start outlining each individual frame. And this is what it looks like now. You can definitely start to see how it's gonna turn out. And this thing is absolutely enormous. This is gonna be so cool. But now that I have the outline done, I'm gonna start working on this section right next to it. And for these colors, I'm gonna use some oxidized copper and some warp slabs. Okay, this is how it looks so far. And these colors actually aren't too far off from what they actually are. But now that I have that done, there's these two little sections right here. And then along the inside, there's this beige color. And for that, I'm going to use sandstone. All right, so it's a little darker along the outside right here. And then along the inside is where the lighter color is. Okay, I think that definitely works. All right, here's what it looks like so far. And the only thing I have left to do is the eye in the center. And to do that, I'm going to be using even more black concrete. And then a little strip along the outside of black wool. It doesn't look very good up close. So let's go fly up and see how it looks. Oh my gosh. Wait a second. <laughs> this looks really good. Okay, these color choices definitely worked out. But now that I have one done, it's time to do the other 11. Starting with the outside, just like the other one, and then the inside of the eye. I tried my best to include an eye of ender in each of these end portal frames, but everything that I tried out in creative just didn't look good at all. I had an even harder time finding the right colors to build the eye. So instead, each end portal frame is gonna look like it doesn't have an eye inside. And I don't think it actually looks too bad. And it's all done. I haven't turned around to look yet, but let's look together. Oh my gosh. It looks really good. This is turning out so much better than I expected. And these block choices actually look pretty good. They're not exactly the same color, but they're close enough, and it definitely looks like an end portal. But we're not done yet, because we can't just have these floating up here. I have to also build the sides of all these blocks, and that's going to take so much longer than doing the top. So first step, we're going to work on this little ring right here. And that color is a much darker blue than all the rest of these, so for that, I'm going to be using Skulk. Here's the progress, and I didn't like how it looked with all birch, so I added some sandstone and some oak up here too. And it's starting to look pretty good, but now we have to start working on the bottom, which is going to be mostly sandstone with a few little areas of birch and oak, since we're trying to replicate the end stone texture. So I just slept and I woke up and I looked at the F3 screen and it's day 1000. That stuck up on me really fast, but we did it. I finally survived a thousand days in hardcore Minecraft, but we still have tons of work to do. This is what I've gotten so far. I've managed to do most of the outside walls and I'm starting to work on these walls now. Having a picture of the end portal frame up while I was building really helped me do this a lot faster. And after a few days of building and terraforming, this is the final end portal. It turned out so good. Oh my gosh. Now that I have all the above ground stuff done, it's time to work on the stuff inside the portal. And the first thing we're going to do is break the end portal frame, since I think it'll look a lot better with just the portal and no frame. So to do that, I'm going to have to fly home real quick, grab some mushrooms, as well as some bone meal. Then we have to come back down here to the portal, break this obsidian that I was using to protect it. And then I have to place a mushroom in a very specific spot, which is going to be right here. Then I could plant the mushroom. And then if I bone meal this, it should... Oh, okay. It didn't work. <laughs> I think I have to place some blocks above the mushroom because it grew too tall this time. Okay, attempt number two. There we go. It worked. Check it out. Once I break this and there's no more end portal frame and this is going to make it look so much better. Amazing. The end portal frame is completely destroyed and we're left with just this, a single portal floating in the middle of this giant void. You can barely even see it. Oh my gosh. And it already looks kind of cool just like this, but we're about to make it look a whole lot better. And the first thing we're going to build is going to be the main end island and it's going to go right around this portal. So let's grab a ton of end stone and start building up this island. I'm going to make it about five layers thick. That way it looks pretty similar to the real thing. I'm trying to make everything in this build look as close to the real thing as possible. So the main island is going to be pretty big and it's also going to have some obsidian pillars on it. All right, here's all the end stone complete and it honestly looks really weird. But once we add the obsidian pillars, it's going to look so much better. Now I want these obsidian pillars to be in the exact spot that they would be if this were the real thing. So I'm going to spend some time planning it out. And here it is with the outline of each of the 10 portals. So now I just have to build these up and they're all going to be different heights too, just like the real thing. And there we go. All 10 pillars are done, but there's one ingredient that I forgot to bring with me, and that's 10 end crystals, since we're going to be adding end crystals on top of each of the 10 pillars. All right, I need to be extra careful not to kill myself doing this, but we're going to do one. Ooh, I'm scared. We're going to do two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And already it looks so much better. Let's check it out from the sky. Yeah, here it is. Oh, this looks so cool. It's like a little mini end island. Now that I have this main island basically complete, I'm going to start working on all the other 
small ones that are going to go up here. And they're going to be tiny little floating islands just like the outer end islands. Since right now it looks pretty boring with just this one thing in the center. And we're also going to be planting chorus plants on top of all these too. But it's time to bust out some more end stone and get to work building these small little end islands. Here's what our first tiny island looks like and I'm going to plant a chorus flower right here. And then eventually it should grow into a giant chorus plant. And here it is, fully complete. It looks so much better with all these little floating islands. And the chorus plants add some nice color too, which makes it stand out against this black background. But overall, this build turned out amazing. And even though it was my biggest and longest project yet, it was definitely worth it. Let's look at it with some shaders. Oh my gosh, look at this. <laughs> wow, that looks so good. Whoa, this is really cool. Everything always looks better with shaders. But that's gonna be all for me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this build and let me know what you think in the comments. But I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.